Another science clip now on BBC Two, and this time we investigate the sticky subject of friction. On a wet road, friction is the car's best friend. Slippery roads can be lethal. Too slippery and the tyres slide or skid, they lose their grip. That's why local authorities monitor all the roads in the country to make sure they aren't too slippery. WDM in Bristol are world experts. They specialise in testing the quality of all our roads. They need to be able to measure the amount of friction between the road surface and the tyres of a typical vehicle. Hi, my name is Peter Safiro. I'm the Operations Manager for WDM Limited. Today, with the aid of this truck, we're going out testing some roads for their friction. We're heading for Bradley Stoke. Yeah. So as traffic lights turn left. Along stretches of road where drivers often break suddenly, like roundabouts and pedestrian crossings, it's important that roads have a high level of friction. Traffic lights turn right. First out of the roundabout. This computer carries out the friction tests. We're going to switch it over to testing mode. The wheel's going down. The machine measures the friction of the road surface by using a special wheel which is lowered onto the road. This contains sensors. These measure the force between the road and the wheel, the friction. To recreate slippery wet conditions, there's a constant jet of water sprayed on the road as the machine... Right about in, and we start the test on this point here. And we started. Surface should come up now, 70s to... 95, 97, down to 50s. The busier the road, the more the road surface gets worn down. This reduces the friction. The computer displays the friction over 10 metre distances. The higher the figure, the greater the friction. Now it's gone up over to 100, 104, it's driven back down. Most standard roads must have a minimum friction level of 45 but at pedestrian crossings and roundabouts, it must be at least 60. End of survey, and wheel coming up. Wheels up. I'm going to save this. Once the information has been collected by this truck, we bring it back to WDM, who process the information, and then send it off to the county council or the highways agency. And they make decisions whether to monitor the road further or fix the road to make it all safe. Good test. Good test. Good. Okay, John, that's fine. Let's call it a day. I'm back home. Okay, let's go. To happily ever after, the show where we visit famous fairy tale characters who lived happily ever after. Today, Rapunzel. But what's this? It's Rapunzel, and she is still in the tower. And look over there, it's the handsome prince going away. What went wrong? Let's hear it in Rapunzel's own words. Well, it all started this morning. The handsome prince was late, so I got to work on my own escape plan. I had a great idea, sliding down a plank from this window. So I'm just ready to test it out when outside I hear... Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Let down your hair and I, the handsome... Oh, for goodness sake, stop going on! Climb up my hair and help me test my escape plan. Oh, all right. So, he finally gets up here and then I have to get him to put on one of my dresses. What for? 
Well, I've calculated that it will take me five seconds to slide gently down the plank to the ground wearing this dress. Now, if we are to test my prediction, you need to put on the dress and I will time you. But now! And exactly as I predicted, it took five seconds. Yes! Great. Now then, can we get on with it? <coughs> Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Let down your hair and I... The oh, handsome... will you stop going on? Look, it might have been a fluke result. You should always repeat measurements, just in case. Up you come. We'll have to try again. But... Now! And so we did it again. And again. And again. Well, I had to be sure. So we did it a few more times. And it was all going terribly well, when suddenly... <sighs> That's it! That is it! I've had it! If you want to escape, you'll just have to do it on your own. I am off! This has been Happily Ever After. Next week, why the princess who kissed a prince ended up with a frog. Speed is what matters when you're skiing downhill. Less than a second can make the difference between losing and winning. That's why Dr Peter Styring from the University of Sheffield has been testing out some new skis. His eight-year-old daughter Hannah is his tester. Professionals always wax their skis to help them go faster. The wax makes the surface more slippery, so creates less friction. But Peter's had a better idea, self-waxing skis. The wax comes out of these two small holes. But do they work? Now it's time to test them out against standard skis with wax and with no wax. The difference will be just a fraction of a second. So Peter uses two infrared beams linked to a computer. The time Hannah takes to go through these for each pair of skis can then be compared. First, standard skis without wax. Just once isn't enough for reliable results, so Hannah has to repeat it twice more. Each time she gets into the same position to go down the slope. Next she tries it with wax standard skis. To be a fair test, the only things that should change are the skis. Again she does it three times. And finally, three more runs on the new self-waxing skis. The times are all turned into averages and the results are... The winner by a crucial fraction of a second, the self-waxing skis. There's a new learning service for the BBC designed to help children aged 5 to 16 explore, learn and create. You can find out more by logging on to bbc.co.uk slash jam.